So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the plugin and set it up SEO Yoast. Um, so first of all, I mean, you just need to find the plugin. This is obviously for WordPress and just install it. Now I re really recommend, even if you don't want Yoast SEO, you do need an SEO plugin. There's some functionality that you just don't get in WordPress inbuilt that you're definitely gonna want. Um, and Yoast SEO is just one I've been using for years. I feel very comfortable. It does what I want it to do, so it's very easy. Note I only use the free version, so don't feel like you have to go do the paid version. Um, there's also a lot of functionality in the tool that I don't use. Anyway, I've installed it, I've activated it. Let's go to settings and get it set up. So this is a really good starting point if you've just installed it on your new blog or on an existing blog. Um, feel free just to copy my settings because you can play with these settings at any time, right? This is just a good initial setup. So first of all, I look at features. Now, this Yoast tool has a lot of stuff that I just don't agree with. I don't like the SEO analysis. I personally think they encourage over-optimization. It's not really up to date and you're better off following um, when I, I, my tutorials about keywords and doing that. The readability analysis just annoys me. According to it, I never write readable articles. I just find all these things are somewhat pointless. TextLit Counter can be a bit useful. It'll tell you um, how many internal links are happening. So, I mean, you might keep that on. The sitemaps is definitely useful. So when you have that on, if you go here, you can see your XML sitemap here. Um, and that's what you're gonna use in Search Console um, to submit in Search Console that that's the sitemap. So keep that one. You definitely get rid of this admin bar menu, which uh, I don't like up here because I just don't feel like I need those things. So they can just go. I don't like the usage tracking either. Um, so that's good enough for me for the moment. You can always turn these things off later, on later if you want them. But for now, I'll just get rid of them. I'll stop you getting all these error messages from it telling you haven't done keywords properly or your content isn't readable. So let's go to search appearance. So this is where you wanna go through. It's best just to go through each tab and do what you need to do. Now this is what shows up in the title bar of your homepage, okay? So by title bar, I mean up here, how this says search appearance, Yoast SEO, Tasmania Family, WordPress, that's the title bar. Okay, so this will tell you what it will say on your homepage. So you can change this if you like, or you don't need to. So it'll have the site title, page, separate a tagline. We'll see what that equals for this site. I mean, it depends what you've set up like as your tagline or whatever. So in this case, obviously I've set up nothing because it just says Tasmania family um, and it has that hyphen. So I could edit this here. So say since I don't even have a tagline, I could get rid of it. Um, it's, it's really up to you. Um, so you can also put a meta description for your homepage right there too. So that's very useful. This is just a brand new site. So um, I'm using as a test for this, but you should generally have a meta description for your homepage. That's the description that is most likely to come up in search results if Google lists your homepage. So that's the first one done. I don't want to change anything. And for most people that will be fine initially too. Settings for single post URL, you know, you definitely want them to show in search results. Um, again, you can change with what it shows at the top um, in this title bar if you want to. That will just sort of apply across the whole site. Generally, what it has is fine. Um, you can always change it later. And it's the same type of thing for the pages. So you can leave that too. Media, I recommend you set that to yes. Now, do you want to show categories in search results? So this is where you can de-index search uh, categories if you've ever heard people talk about that. I personally would not de-index them, so I keep that as yes. Again, you can change the title. I kind of hate archives being in it, so I remove the archives. I'd rather it just said like the term title, so the category title, um, and didn't bother with the archives. You can do the same for tags. So I, I personally remove the archives. I mean, that's just personal taste, right? It doesn't really matter. I just want all the archives gone. Um, now removing the categories prefix. By default in WordPress, if you have a category and you go to that page, it'll have like tasmaniafamily.com.au slash category name, uh, sorry, category, and then slash the category name. So it just puts this extra category. Now to me, that's just completely unnecessary. Who needs that category in there? I just prefer to remove it. I like my categories, if you go to them, to look like a regular blog post. So I just make it so it doesn't say category in the URL. I think it looks neater. But again, I mean, it's not the end of the world to leave it. So I'll just save that. Um, so we're up to archives. Now I reckon you disable author archives 
Okay, so this is where if you clicked on the author name, it would take you to another archive. So like a category that lists a whole lot of blog posts in the category. If you click on the author name, it'll, it'll list all the articles that that author's written. Now, if you're building a big site with like 10 authors or even like a few authors, you might think that's desirable when most bloggers are just themselves or one other person. So it's really superfluous and having all these extra archives is bad for, for SEO. So I would disable this unless you're going to have a lot of authors and you can really see value. You know, do people really care what other ones that that particular author wrote? Well, if you think that's yes, then keep it enabled, otherwise disable. Date archive settings I also think are particularly unhelpful, so I disable them too. That's when you might be able to see all the posts from 2019 or January 2019, um, but up to you. And that's uh, what comes up in the title for searching or 404. So, I mean, you can fiddle with that if you want to. I think it's okay by default. Now, breadcrumbs, you can enable them or disable them. Um, even if you enable them here, you usually have to go do some code in your theme. So you can choose whether to do that or not. Um, and this is just if you want to edit a little bit about the RSS feed. But by default, all this stuff is fine. So that's basically just what you need to do at the beginning to get your SEO plugin optimized.